Hi, my name is Alex Linde, and welcome to this quick demo of CyberArk's Secure Web Sessions. Secure Web Sessions is a new offering that is an add-on to the CyberArk Identity Platform and allows you to provide step recording, continuous authentication, and session isolation as three additional security layers to protect your sensitive or privileged cloud applications. While Secure Web Sessions does sit on CyberArk's existing identity platform, you can also integrate with your existing identity provider or SSO solution to get into the user portal and allow your users to launch the particular apps that you'd like to have protected with those additional security layers. But if you do like to use CyberArk's built-in identity platform, it comes with some Innovative features such as a QR code for a passwordless login for your users and significant uh, user benefits in the form of self-service password reset or username identification, as well as adaptive MFA so that MFA requirements can be increased or decreased based on the risk of that user's activity. But in this case, we're just going to log in in the most simple way by putting in the password and we'll use a FIDO2 security key as our MFA. And in this way, we are inside the user portal. And as I mentioned before, if you have an existing identity provider, a single click to a tile within your identity provider will also land the user on the screen. So they're not going to have to log in twice. In this case, the user has a number of different applications but you may not want to put those additional security layers on every single application. Maybe some applications such as Outlook are just uh, providing too much data for you to want to monitor what the users are doing. So we well, could put it on perhaps some of the most interesting applications, uh, things that uh, have, have potential security risks like the AWS Management Console or the Administrative Console for CyberArk's Endpoint Privilege Manager or Salesforce, where users can manipulate accounts and data related to them. You can easily see which applications have the SWS security layers added because they have a blue shield with a little checkbox on top. And the user will only need one thing to make this work, which is the Secure Web Sessions extension applied to their Chrome browser or Chromium browser. And now let's see an example of launching an application that is protected in this way. We'll start with AWS. As you see, when the user clicks on the application, the first step is CyberArk will let you know that we're validating which security layers are needed. In this case, just step recording. In the final revision of this solution, we're also going to have a continue button so the user will know for sure that they're being recorded. And as you see, they get a little desktop pop-up so that, again, they're notified that recording is being taken place. Finally, you can see that the little shield has changed into a little red dot, also notifying the user that they're being recorded. And now step recording has begun. So when the user does actions, such as going to the launch a virtual machine, then the SWS solution will take screenshots of those specific activities and report on them in the audit and compliance record that I'll show you a little bit later in the presentation. Now, it's important to point out that all this is done through the browser extension. It's not a proxy. It's not a CASB. So it's not a man in the middle. It doesn't change the user experience or tunnel the traffic through it. It's just like a camera that sits on top of the user experience and captures data. It's really no different than literally pointing a camera at the computer and taking a video or snapshots and then analyzing them later. Another important thing to point out is that if you turn on the continuous authentication option, then if the user were to walk away with the phone, they'll receive a warning. They'll need to scan in a QR code with their phone. And if they don't do that, then the system will automatically log them out. And this is another way that you can prevent people from walking away from particularly sensitive sessions. And this is also a feature that you can either turn on or off. So if you're uncomfortable with that, you don't need to necessarily use it. And now we can check out what type of instances we have available. And we can even launch some instances as well. 
such as this Amazon Linux. And we can do other actions within the console as well. For example, we can take a look at some of the snapshots that we have available. We can create a new snapshot and other things. So these are just a few examples of the type of data that you might want to capture. And now let's try another application. For example, CyberArk's EPM. CyberArk's EPM is used to add additional levels of security around endpoints, in specific limiting unnecessary privilege. So this is an application that you may want to protect using SWS. And as you can see again, we get the little pop-up letting us know that step recording has started. And then we can get into one of our sets and take a look at some of the policies that we have in place. We'll go into the policy section. And here we have a list of already configured policies. So maybe we're going to select one of the policies. We'll right click on it and we'll activate that policy. And once it has been activated, maybe we go back to it and deactivate the policy. A common use case might be if somebody turned off a very important policy in an application or somebody turned on a policy that was supposed to be off or maybe somebody made a policy that really shouldn't be there. This is something that you can find out through looking at the SWS audit logs. And the final application that we'll take a look at is Salesforce. Again, we're validating the security layers. Recording has started. We get a desktop pop-up. And here I'm just using the classic view because it's what I'm used to. But of course, you could also use the Lightning experience. And maybe the user would go into opportunities and they would find an opportunity like this GenePoint SLA. And they could click the edit button. Maybe a rogue salesperson wants to bump up his commission. So they change this 900,000 to 1 million and 900,000. They could also go to accounts section, for example, and find an account like Edge Communications. And maybe they accidentally make a change, such as changing 123 Main Street to 1234 Main Street. Maybe it was an accidental move, but changing the billing address or the shipping address could create problems for the sale later on. And this is something that you may want to become aware of. So these are some of the kinds of things that the extension can capture. And now let's switch to the SWS administrative experience. To launch the experience is quite simple. You launch a CyberArk mobile app, it will scan your face, and then you will need to scan a QR code to get into the portal. This is a very nice, secure way of providing access. It's passwordless, it's keywordless, and yet it does biometric authentication on the user to make sure they are who they say they are to launch them into the app. And then it will require another level of biometric authentication to get into the session recordings. But first, let's take a quick look at the policies section. Here we have policies set up for the different applications we configured, including AWS, EPM, and Salesforce. The policies are pretty straightforward. They will just simply specify which users or user groups as roles within CyberArk Identity or security groups in Active Directory are set up to be recorded and what type of security is applied. In this case, it's just step recording, but we can also change the defaults and add one, two, or three of these additional layers if we need to. 
Now the users is really just your administrative and audit users. So in this case, it's just myself. It's not the actual users who are being recorded. And now let's take a look at the recordings. In order to get into the recordings, we do another face ID and we scan a QR code that is presented for us. This functions as both an MFA scan to make sure that we really are who we say we are before we are allowed access into this particularly sensitive data. But what it also does is it uses an encryption key pair to decrypt those recordings so that we can access them and see what's going on. Let's take a look at the recording for Amazon Web Services, the first one that we did today. As you can see, it shows me photos of what I was doing within the environment. I launched the AWS Management Console. I went into the search bar. I changed the URL to get into this EC2 Management Console. Okay. I went into the launch wizard. I checked what instances we have here. Here we have an attempt to launch an instance, which could be important if you're tracking who's launching instances. And I went over launch a virtual machine again. I went into the snapshot section and so on and so forth. This data can also be searched. So if I want to, I can turn on the keywords and I type in snapshots. And here we have the particular instance where I clicked on the snapshots area. And now let's take a look at the EPM recording. In the EPM recording, I launched into it. Here's the page on which I landed. You can see that a little bit later on, I clicked on the policy section. I clicked on the policy called run normally, and then I activated it. Again, all this can be searched in the keywords. If you want to know particularly interesting areas, I can search for activate. And here it pops up and you can see where I clicked on activate. Let's see if a deactivation took place as well. And here we are, and we can see also the deactivation action as well. So again, it really helps you to understand what your users are doing in the environment and what type of actions they're taking. And our final example will be Salesforce. It's very similar to the other ones, so I'll go through it pretty quickly. For example, here we see when the user clicked on a, this opportunity, we can see an edit was made and we can see in here that I changed the 900,000 to 1 million and 900,000. And these are some of the kinds of things that you might want to know when users are doing. Now, I would like to point out that some of these SaaS applications already have audit and compliance capabilities built in, so you can learn about some of the actions going on. But what SWS gives you is a consolidated ability to see those actions in every application have recording done in exactly the same way. Everything is in a single portal, so you can find it all in one place, and you can see the context around the actions that they're taking. For example, if a user is in an HR application clicking around in different people's salaries, the HR solution may not find that malicious, but with SWS, you'll be able to see that kind of behavior and you'll be able to, to walk through what the user is doing. And the final thing I wanted to mention is that searching capabilities can be also filtered by the type of activity that is being done. And by de default, the session recordings also allow you to search by application. You can search by the user and you can filter it out by the time period in which the recording was done. Thank you very much for joining us for this quick demo of Secure Web Sessions.